Hey guys, this is one of my runs on World of Illusion Spiritus Shiva. This run will fulfill both the weapon type mission as well as the crystal color mission, both in one run. This run actually took me quite a long time, a couple of hours, partly due to adjustments along the way and also partly due to bad RNG. Unfortunately, there is a little bit of RNG involved, although I tried to adjust to minimize the RNG as much as possible. First off, with regards to this party, Twins, Edgar, and Kor, Edgar has FR and Melbit and BT at 0 out of 3. Right at the start of battle, both bosses will petrify a random single target. If Edgar gets petrified, you have to soft reset. If Twins X first, it's okay if they get petrified. But if they are not acting first, then you have to reset if Twins get petrified. Lastly, for Kor, it's okay if Kor gets petrified. Once you get past the initial round of petrification, about 80% of the RNG is over. There's still a little bit more RNG left, but that's very minimal, and it comes later on in the fight. The rest of the starting turn order isn't too bad. Ideally also, you want to have all three characters acting before the boss, but I don't think it's that mandatory. It's very hard to get the same turn order, but you don't really need the exact same turn order. Although you do need to make slight adjustments, obviously if your turn order is slightly different than mine. But the gist of it is, on Twins' first turn, you want to use AA and BT+. Core, if he gets petrified, then you just want to link him to Edgar. Do not link Core to Twins at all. Even if you have Core's BT aura, do not link him to Twins, because he will eat up available buff slots. So, Core will have two turns overall, and in these two turns, you want to set up the linking to Edgar, his EX, as well as BT+. Do his BT+, last, as such. Over here, boss will enter force time, but you should be taking 0 HP damage from the force attack because Kor himself is immune to break. You finally come back to Edgar's turn. Before starting force time, use the Media LD call to give everyone blink, and this helps to minimize the risk of getting petrified later in the fight. If all done well, the bosses should have one turn right after Edgar as such. This is done on purpose because we will actually be making use of Edgar's BT trap. If the bosses have acted before Edgar, this is likely because they have a very early start in the turn order. Or you did not break them enough. Anyway, Edgar has two consecutive turns, so go FR, and with 10 turns left on the force gauge, go straight into BT mode. Because Edgar's BT is 0 out of 3, his BT mode is 1 turn shorter, but it isn't all that bad because you do really want all the turns you can spare after the BT mode because you'll be chaining Echoes. It is important somewhere at the start or first turn of BT mode to use one drill, mainly because drill lands 2 additional debuffs and that way you can make use of Edgar's force conditionals to get a higher force bonus percentage, because it's tied to the number of debuffs on the bosses. Lastly, there is one HP gate at 89%, so try to adjust your damage so that bosses roughly go to 89% from an attack so that you do not waste excess HP damage.
遅いな真実を見極めよう行け恨みっこなしだいいな Alright, coming out of BT mode, the bosses will get a turn, and this is actually ideal. It would be even better if the bosses are not targeting twins, because Core isn't linked to twins, so I miss out on a PMT strike each here. So if the bosses happen to be targeting either Core or Edgar, you actually do get a few extra attacks in as well. But the whole idea is to deal massive damage with the Edgar's traps. Which is very relevant. With that damage from the traps, this attack from Twins will bring the boss to the next HP gain, which is 69%. If you are starting this turn at 69%, then you are well on your way. The next two attacks will bring the boss very close to 49%. After which, cause preemptive strikes will bring them to 49% and will trigger Howl, Howl Plus, which is good because Howl Plus actually delays the bosses. So bosses are at 50% which is good. Here they're supposed to get a turn but because of cross BMT strike it, br it brings them down to 49%. At 49% bosses use how plus and delay themselves. Here use one more echoes with twins and one mega flare which should bring them very close to 20% health. Now this part here is quite key. The reason why I used Auto Crossbow Plus instead of Echoes here is firstly the boss is very close to 19% health and secondly also I want the turn manipulation to come in. I'm hoping Auto Crossbow will bring the bosses to 19% although I wasn't really sure to be honest whether it was enough damage but I decided to risk it because the turn order after using Auto Crossbow is a very nice turn order allowing me to use Edgar's Force Echoes at one turn of force time remaining. So I decided to just risk it and go for auto crossbow here. At 19%, the bosses will delay themselves once more. And this is the trickiest part of the fight because at this part of the fight, the bosses have 300% increased defense and they will also reduce your brave gains by 90%, essentially neutering both core and twins. So here I use Echoes on core just so that I can pass his turn to Edgar while still maintaining force time. Notice though that core is actually doing zero damage. Final Force Echoes in Force Time and this has to bring the bosses to roughly about 
If it's anything higher, then it's very likely that you will not be able to make it. Here I decided to use the Sabin Call because Sabin Call also ignores defense, allowing him to actually deal damage. On hindsight, you should be equipping a Fist Ultimate Weapon on Sabin if you have it. If you don't have Sabin Call, use any other call that ignores defense. A Cyan LD Call is also a great choice here. And on hindsight, I think a Cyan LD Call is actually even better. So don't do what I did here. Give Twins a Cyan LD Call instead. And give Cyan a Ultimate Weapon to hold. If you do that, the Cyan LD Call should be able to close out the fight. Anyway, at this point, if the bosses survive with 2 to 3 percent, it's not the end of the run. First off, what you want to do is empty course stacks. So use Reaper's Gale. If you want, you can use one or two LDs and then spam Reaper's Gale. At least you do a little bit of damage because Reaper's Gale do rainbows. But do not let course PT Aura run out. So here I just decided to use his last Reaper's Gale. And then I end his turn with EX. Finally, coming back to Edgar's turn. What you want to do here is spam LD. LD is instant turn, and you have to pray that the LD and maybe one more final attack after his LDs is sufficient to kill off the boss. If the boss enters force time, then it's most likely a run ender here. And just enough damage, thankfully. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful, and if you enjoyed the content, do leave a like, comment, or subscribe. It really helps a lot. Till then, I'll see you guys in the next Shinryu fight. Bye!